Stuart Smith from Berkshire Guitar Amplifier Repairs and on the bench today we have a Fender Blues Junior. Now I know you guys like to see repairs from start to finish rather than having cutaways and then cut back when everything's done so I thought I'd have a look at this amp as it's come into the workshop and see if we can find out what's wrong with it. The customer says that he hasn't used it for three or four years and when he turned it on the output tube red plated and he smelt a very bad burning smell coming from inside the uh, amplifier so of course that's not good burning is always bad so what I'll do is that we'll open it up and see the extent of the damage and see if we can see what's gone on here and to do that I've got my uh, my trusty uh, DeWalt um, drill with a, a positive drive bit in it, it makes it quite easy and of course always have a pot to put the, the parts in. So we'll go ahead and take the back off this amp, it'll just take a couple of seconds. This is a screw I always forget, I always think it's part of holding on this grill. So you don't need to undo these two guys here, but you do need to undo this one. And when you've done that the back will just pop right off, so let's have a look. He says. Yep, there we go, there's the back off. Okay, so it looks nice and clean inside. Um, nothing obvious at the moment. This is a quite a useful piece of kit too. It's a little headband with a magnifying glass. So let's just have a little look inside, see if I can see where this burning is coming from. It'll be around the, the tube, the power tubes. Oh, I can see it. I can see it immediately actually. A uh, couple of tracks have arced together. Now you won't be able to see that on this view so I'll just stop the camera for a second and we'll have a little close-up look at this area of the board here uh, where the burnings occurred and then we'll see what we can do about it. Okay here's a close-up not very easy to see I agree but I'll point it out with my, my trusty chopstick so right there you can see I hope that um, two of the I don't know how close I can get in with this two of the tracks have um, actually arced, arced across to each other and there's a substantial area of burning right there. So we have two parallel tracks there which have arced across. Okay, so what are we going to do? Um, well, that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to take all the valves out, undo those nuts and try to ease that board forward into a position where we can have a closer look at that tracking. If I'm able to do that, um, obviously won't leave the camera running for that, that will take uh, you know quite a bit of time. The trick here is to drill out the area that's charred and then remake the connection so that they can't arc across. I've done that before during arcing. Of course we don't know why it arced either was it just a bad valve or were the tracks too close together? I haven't come across this on the Fender Blues Junior before. Anyway, what I'll do now is stop the camera, I'll take that board out and then we can rejoin it at that point. Okay, I've been about half an hour messing around trying to take out this power board um, and realise I've been doing it wrongly. I've never actually taken out the power board, the power tube board on one of these amps. I've taken out the uh, main board many times to be able to work on it, but I've never had occasion to take out the valve board. So after like half an hour of trial and error, the way to do it seems to be to put the amp on its side like this, and then to come in from this side with a reasonably fine tipped um, and exactly the right, the right length 
um, posi drive screwdriver and remove the uh, screws from from this underside here. There are, um, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I think there's uh, 11, 11 screws there and uh, that, that's allowed the board to come um, a little bit free now. Now I'm going to very carefully try to swing this, this board out. You have to be quite careful of these ribbon cable connectors here, they're very stiff and if you flex them backwards and forwards too much they can break off at the, at the ends and um, that's a real problem. That applies to the, to the main board as well when you're trying to undo that. So let's go ahead now and see if I can uh, free up this board and then uh, we'll rejoin when I've managed to get the board out. Okay back again it wasn't too difficult to very carefully and gingerly push that board out by pushing on the the tube bases and then very carefully easing it out and slowly bending it backwards. Now you can immediately see the problem area here. What's happened is um, my the tip of my knife here is actually on one of the pins of the preamp valve and um, this track here goes around that pin and goes off to here. This is badly arced across there. I would say that's a design fault. This There's not enough clearance between the track here and the pin and um, that's arced across and uh, destroyed the track. Um, it's a little bit of a problem. I think I'm going to... I'm hoping I can save this this valve base without putting a new one in. Um, uh, so what I will attempt to do is to make a wire connection from that pin to there. I'm going to drill out all the um, charred areas and I'm going to make a wire connection from that pin here to there I believe it goes um, and just bypass this whole section of um, of track altogether. Of course at this stage we don't know why that arced, it could just be a design fault, it could be something else but until I fix that and um, pop some valves in we will never know. I won't film this live, it'll be quite a tricky operation. This, actu this job actually is a very a very tricky job, not a, not an easy fix at all. So um, I will uh, I will do that. It'll probably take me half an hour or so, um, but you get the idea of how to do it. And then I'll show you what I've done. So hopefully you can do the same if ever you get this problem. I hope you can see I've cleaned. I've cut back the tracks here, and I've cut back the track there, and I've cut back the track there, and I've scraped all the carbon off and I've cleaned it with solvent cleaner and that pin of the valve base is fairly accessible so I'm, I'm quite happy to solder onto that and um, take my connection over to here and to solder onto here and run a wire over to here. So that's not rocket science, I'll do that now and then I'll report back to you. Okay I don't know if you can see that um, I'm going to have a, a go at putting the second wire in. I've put the first wire in there and now our second wire is going to go from that point there um, to here. The track originally went round the outside of here. I'm just going to go straight across with this wire. Um, I'm going to try and put that in so that you can see. You may not be able to. Let me have a go. So I'm just going to tin this uh, ribbon connector cable here. And I'm going to tin this valve pin here. I've already pre-prepared my wire to the right length and tinned both ends. Uh, I think I'll start by trying it up at this end here. Bend that round. It's a little bit of a fiddle, I'll just move that one out of the way. And there you go, I should be able to solder that onto there without too much trouble. Yeah, there it goes, that's quite nice, happy with that. And now I'm going to solder this wire onto here. There we go. 
double check my connections. I always do that. I'm always very careful before I turn on an amp. And um, so this wire originally went from that pin there straight up to there, and it does. That wire has duplicated that. And this track went round the outside of here and this wire duplicates that. So am I happy with that? Um, do you know what? I'm not terribly happy because this solder connection here is still quite close to quite close to this track even though I've taken some of that away. So I think I'm just going to unsolder that and put it on the other side of this pin just to move it away to make sure there's no further arcing there. <coughs> so we'll just heat it up. And take it over the other side here. Like that. Now I'm a bit happier that that is that this wire and this connection here are, are away from uh, this track here. We'll just tidy these up a little bit. And that's job done. So what we now need to do is to get this board joggled back into there, carefully avoiding any strain on these ribbon cables. And then what I think I'll do is I think I'll put a couple of screws in and uh, pop some valves in and see, see what happens. See you in a bit. Right, well the board went back very easily, it only took about a minute to put the board back in. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to try now to put a couple of screws in. Excuse my head if you can see it. And once you've got one in, of course, it becomes, becomes quite easy. I'm just going to stick my head in, in the frame to get this first one in. There we go. As I say, once one has gone in, it locates all the others. So I'm just going to put a couple of screws in here because this could blow up again. We don't know why all that arcing happened there. Was it a bad valve? Is it a design fault? I've never seen that before and I've worked on dozens of uh, Fender Blues Juniors. Okay, so the board's just held in with a couple of screws. I'm going to go and grab some valves and I'll be back in a jiffy. Okay, I'm sure you've all seen tubes put in before, but just in case you haven't, um, I've got a pair of uh, JJ EL84s and three JJ ECC83, so we'll, we'll just pop those in. See what I'm doing here. Oh yes, it's that way around. Put a little gentle waggle as you push them in a firm, steady push. Line up the pins, firm, steady push. And as you can see, I'm just slightly rocking the valve, not too much, otherwise you'll you'll bend those pins. There's the third preamp valve. The board's not very well supported because I've got most of the screws out, so I just put my hand behind there to support that board. Now we'll pop in the power tubes again. I'll support the board because I've only got a couple of screws in there. Righty-ho, that's the valves in. Now, um, what I'm going to do um, now is uh, I've got the amp connected to a Variac and um, I'm going to wind up the Variac slowly and we're going to see what happens. The, the speakers are connected, the guitar is connected in case we feel like we're going to get lucky. And as I speak to you now, I have no idea what's going to happen on this amp as I power it up. Um, that could arc across again, there could be some other fault on the amp. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, wind it up slowly and see if the thing bursts into flames or not.
I'm just turning on the Variac now and um, winding us up to about uh, half, that's about half voltage, about 120 volts or so. Um, and uh, I'm just going to hang around for a little bit and uh, see if anything happens. Uh, see if the I'm going to turn off this light here to give us a bit more contrast and turn this round a bit so that you can see. Um, whilst we're just waiting for things to warm up, I'm I'm just going to get my meter and uh, see if we are getting any HT on these caps here because the HT should be slowly coming up. Oh yes, we've got we've got a 145. Yeah, we've got 145 volts, which is about what I'd expect for half voltage on the Variac. So I'm feeling that we can maybe go ahead and turn that up a, a smidgen more and see if the thing blows up or see if it's come back to life. The pilot light is pilot light is on. I can hear a faint hum from the speaker. So I've got the guitar connected. I'm just going to go and strum it. Whoa! Hey! People, we're in business there. And no one's happier than me. Um, I'm going to wind that up now to full. Still on about um, 170 volts. Okay, so now we're on maximum. Full power. I can't see anything horrible happening. Uh, the valves are all lit. All seems good there. I haven't checked um, the bias on this amp yet. I'll do that later on. And uh, ooh, the thing's working. Reverb's up, I see. We'll turn that down. Well, I'm, I'm delighted with that. That's, um, I'll just um, pull the camera back a bit so that you can see me. Okay, well, I'm, I'm really happy with that because uh, that was a tricky repair as repairs go. We didn't know why the arcing had happened and um, it was quite hard to get that board out and quite tricky to make that repair. And no one's happier than me when, when an amp comes to life like that. I've repaired Oh, 2,000 amplifiers in the last few years and I still get a real thrill every time I do a tricky repair and it all comes to life. That's, it's probably why I do it. There's certainly no money in it. Okay so uh, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and put all the remaining screws in. If you remember we only put a couple in there. Uh, put the amp back together properly, put the, put the uh, back on it, and um, actually before I do that I'm going to put the customer's um, existing preamp valves in because he hasn't, he hasn't asked me for a complete new set of valves. So we'll pop those back in, I'm sure they'll be fine. I am however going to sell him a new pair of power valves because I don't want to put those old power valves back in in case that arcing was caused by a valve. So um, we'll do all that and um, I won't bother to show you the the customer's preamp valves working, I'm sure they'll be fine. So you'll next draw me when the amp's back together and I'll see you then. Right, I thought I'd just show you a bit of an update here. Um, I've put in the customer's original valves and despite what I said earlier I thought well why don't I check the customer's EL84s, they look quite good. I put them in the valve tester and they're fine, so I've popped those back in. But I wanted to show you this cool uh, bias meter that I've got here for EL84 valves. You can see it's this tower arrangement here. So you just, you just pop that into the valve base, put the tube into the top of here, and this allows you to read off the plate voltage and the... Um, bias current. They're made by Eurotubes, 
who make a very good range of BIOS meters. I mean, they're a hundred quid, but um, uh, I find them absolutely invaluable. Now, I want to show you, I did turn the amp on, but I just want to show you what happens. I'm going to turn the amp on now, and we'll see what happens to the BIOS on this customer's um, original valve set here. So let's have a look at the meter. You can see the plate voltage is 345 and here comes the current. Now that it should be about 33 milliamps. See that going up to 50? I'm going to turn this off actually. 60 milliamps. That's nearly double the current that the valve should be taking. I wonder if that contributed to that arcing. I don't know. I can't be certain. But that amplifier is certainly completely incorrectly biased. So I'm going to go ahead and bias the amp, but I'm not going to show you how to do that on this video. That would be too long, and uh, I'll make that the subject of a separate video. Suffice it to say, Fender haven't supplied a bias pot. You have to f swap out some fixed resistors, which is a right pain. But anyway, um, I'll go ahead and do that. I'll get the cover back on, and uh, then I'll rejoin you just for a final few words. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I enjoyed making it. It's always a great bonus when you do a difficult repair and the amp works beautifully. I like these Fender Blues Junior very much. They're portable, you can pick them up, they've got a great sound. They don't have a, a good drive or overdrive sound, so you'll need to use pedals with them. But they're very nice little amplifiers and I do, I do recommend them. Well, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.